Hi there, this is Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I have a super easy pattern to make crocheted slippers. This is the basic pattern here and then this is the option to add a cuff if you like. So I'm going to show you both ways. Um, this is the same slipper as this and then the cuff is added. I'm using two different types of yarns here which give it a totally different look. This is a number five chunky yarn, this is a number six, this is variegated, this is plain the fabrics are turned in a different direction so there's a there's a few different ways that you can make these slippers and I really love this self-striping yarn it's so much fun impossible to match the colors but still I think it's super fun so let's get started so I'm using a chunky yarn this is a number five chunky yarn it's a, a wool acrylic blend this is by loops and threads which is a Michaels brand this was a big ball it was 278 yards this is just some of what I have left to make the pair of slippers uh, in with the cuff ladies size six six and a half you'd need about 120 to 130 yards thereabouts uh, there's 278 yards on this ball so you'd be able to make like two pairs of slippers so yeah this is a bulky yarn it's um, the color is taupe they're recommending an eight millimeter crochet hook for slippers I like to go slightly smaller because um, I like it to be a tight stitch so I'm using a six and a half millimeter crochet hook this one here this is a number six bulky yarn and it is also a wool acrylic brand blend it's by um, lion brand it's the woolies thick and quick and this has 87 yards and i use this entire ball to make the um the slippers without the cuff in the lady six six and a half so if you want to do the cuff or if you're making it bigger you'll need more than one ball of this yarn. They recommend using a uh, nine millimeter crochet hook for this, but I'm using an eight millimeter because again, I like the stitch to be a little bit tighter. You're going to need uh, some scissors, a darning needle that is has a big enough eye to fit the bulky yarn, and you want something to measure the length of your foot. So these slippers are super easy to make. All we're going to do is make a rectangle square, and then we're going to sew it together gather the toe, sew up the heel, and on this one I'm going to show you how to do the cuff. If you want, you can just leave it without the cuff. And so what you want to do is you want to measure your foot and you want the, the rectangle to be the length of your foot and the width of your foot. Now I do have a chart in um, the description box below the video, just click on dot 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 more and it shows you sort of general sizing for our slippers. Um, but there's another measurement around this part and this tends to be a little bit wider and for me it's a half an inch wider. So my panel is nine inches by nine and a half inches. You then want to take into account, do you want the stitch pattern to go this way, which works really nice for a solid color. You've got these nice ends to, to uh, sew up. Or if you're using a variegated or self-striping yarn, it may look better if you turn the whole thing this way, like I did here. And in that case, it's going to be the number of rows that dictates the, the, the nine inches and then your foundation chain is going to be the nine and a half inches wide or whatever it is for the, the uh, how it fits around the end of your foot. I mean they're slippers they have a lot of give so you know it's it's fine but you can see here that turning the fabric this way makes for like sort of a, a nicer showing of the colors versus if it was this way and you sewed it up like that. You know, the colors just look so much better the other way. So you can do it either way. It's up to you. You just want to make it so that your, your width across the toe is a little bit wider. If that's how your foot is, maybe you have a perfect foot and it's nine by nine or whatever it is. Um, so go ahead, use those measurements, and then we're going to crochet. I'll be demonstrating this panel here. Now we're going to create a foundation chain that is either the length or width of your foot depending on which way you want the stitch pattern to go. I'm going to do it for the length. 
So you want to create a slip knot and leave a fairly long tail because you can use this to sew your slipper together. Perhaps, it just depends on where the stitch pattern ends. So create a slip knot. And if you're new to crochet, I do have my beginner crochet series that shows you all the basics of crochet. You're gonna put that on your hook. And the foundation chain needs to be a very loose stitch. So if you're not proficient with your tension, just go up a half a size for crochet hook for the foundation chain. So putting that on your, on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull that through the loop on your hook. And again, making these quite loose, yarn over, and pull that through the loop on your hook. Yarn over and pull that through the loop on your hook. So you're going to make your foundation chain um, either the length or the width of your foot. And so I'm going for a nine inch, and that's my foot size. And it doesn't matter what the stitch count is. It can be an even number, odd number, it doesn't matter. The size of your yarn doesn't matter. You're going for size of chain. So go ahead and make your uh, chain stitch and I'll see you when we come back. All right, so here is my foundation chain. It's nine inches. For me, it was 22 chains. And when you measure this, um, you know, this is quite stretchy. So it is, you know, I pull it a little bit to get to the nine inches. The reason for that is that when you crochet back, the stitch itself will actually lengthen this chain a little bit. So we're going to carry on. And if you have been um, using a larger crochet hook, you can switch back at this time. Now we're gonna crochet back into the back bump of this stitch, of this chain. So your chain has your, your uh, front loop, your back loop or top loop, and the back bump. And we're gonna work into the back bump. So not the stitch right behind your hook, but the next one. You're going to put your hook in under that bump, yarn over, pull the yarn through. You'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, and that's a single crochet. Go into the next bump, yarn over, pull your yarn through. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops. And that's a single crochet. And this whole pattern is made using just a single crochet. So into the next bump, pull the yarn through, yarn over, pull through the two loops. And you're just going to single crochet all the way back along this chain. And you will now have one less stitch than your foundation chain. So I have 22 chains for my foundation chain. At the end of this row, I will have 21 single crochets. Now coming to the end of the row here, or the, the chain, going to finish off and make sure to get that very first chain with your last single crochet. And that's the end of row one. Now you're going to chain one and turn your work and not going into that turning chain, but into the next stitch, you're going to go under both loops, both the V's of that next stitch, yarn over, pull the yarn through, you'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops. And that's a single crochet. Go into the next stitch, going under both loops, pull the yarn through, and do a single crochet. And you are going to single crochet, going under both loops of each stitch, all the way along. That, my dear friends, is the stitch pattern. It is as simple as that. It's just single crochets back and forth, back and forth. So I will see you at the end of this row just to show you one more time how to finish the end of this row and turn your work and begin the next one. So carry on and you will have 21 single crochets or whatever your, your uh, number would be as I described in the previous segment. Now, as you come to the end of row two, it's helpful here to count your stitches to make sure that you're keeping on count because it can be a bit tricky to know which stitches to crochet into here. It's a mistake that a lot of beginners make. So I know I'm at 19 and that's 20 single crochets and 21 single crochets. And that's the end of row two. Now you're just going to repeat row two over and over again until you have it 
the fabric to the size that you want. So chain one, turn your work, and again, not working into that chain stitch, but into the next stitch going under both loops, you're going to work your single crochet. And you're going to just single crochet all the way along, back and forth, until you have your fabric either to uh, the width or the length that you want. So I have here, I'll bring my ruler in here and show you. You can see, so and I have nicely my nine inches. That's my length. So I'm going to make this nine and a half inches wide. So for you, that will be, you know, whatever number of rows will work out for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my fabric and I'll see you at the end. All right, so here I am. I have my nine and a half inches and I'll just finish my last single crochet. And when you have the panel the size that you like, you can just chain one to fasten off. And you wanna leave yourself a nice long tail. I happen to have a nice long tail because that's the end of my ball. And um, so I did 23 rows all together. And so of course I'm going to be sewing it together like this. Um, with this one, I had 24 rows. No, no, I didn't, I had 20 rows and I ended up with my tails on opposite ends and that's really perfect. So anyways, now next we are going to um, stitch these together. So the, the ends with your tails, if you have two, are gonna be your toe end and that's what we'll be using that for. If you're lucky, you'll have a tail on each side and then you'll use one tail for your toe and one tail for the heel. We don't have that. So we're going to be darning in a, a tail for, um, for the slipper. So here's how the slipper looks. We're going to bring the uh, two sides together and with this stitch pattern, it doesn't matter. You don't have a wrong side or a right side, but you are with this one doing your crocheted length. This is your chain stitch that you started with, your foundation chain and your finishing chain. Those long ends go together and we're going to sew the heel. So I'm going to just turn this over so it's in the right direction. So you can just fasten this on your uh, length of yarn here and we'll just start with a stitch at the top. Now this, all this stitching is gonna be to the inside. So we'll leave a bit of a tail here that we can darn in. And I'm just gonna do a double stitch at the top of the heel here. And we're just going to whip stitch this along. There we go, so that's a double stitch. And yeah, I've got way too long of a piece of yarn here. So you're just gonna whip stitch, just picking up, you're, you're working into the ends of the rows here, so there's no real stitch that you can work into. Oh, I'm just getting very tangled. I think I need a snack, that's, that's what's going on here. So just stitch along, just in the ends there, picking up some stitches from each side of the fabric as best as you can. And what you wanna do is you wanna stitch down about halfway. And that's where two inches is. So I can do, I'm gonna do one more stitch there. So now what you wanna do, you've got that back seam sewn up. We're just gonna take the thread and you're gonna make a gathering stitch into the heel here. So bring that through like that and then back through here and just work your way around with a gathering stitch. And it doesn't really matter, you know, the what stitches you're pulling into here. And we'll come in here just like that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pull that stitch and just sort of gather all that fabric of that heel up. And see that makes a nice rounded heel shape. And then pull that nice and snug. And you're gonna go in with a couple of stitches there to secure that. Actually, that's one stitch. Now I'm gonna do a knot. So see that's nice and tight. I'm going to do a knot. And just like a 
double loop knot here, whatever this is. Snug that up. And then you can just go ahead and darn in your tail end. And when you're stitching uh, the slipper together, if, you're, if your chain stitch is here and your heel then will have actually stitches to go into, you can just whip stitch into the, the top loops here, I guess. This is a top loop and that's the top loop. And just stitch along doing the whip stitch just like that. And then same thing, once you get about halfway down, you'll do your gathering stitch. Uh, through here to close up the heel. So it's just you're working into different stitches depending on which way your fabric goes. And I forgot to mention to darn in the tail end here. I just did a, a little knot and then darned in the tail end so that whole heel section is done. So for the toe, you, this one here you have two ends. Uh, take the longer of the two ends and we're just going to do that same uh, gathering stitch. So we'll just go into this side here and then you're just going to gather like um, you did on the heel section there and you're going to bring a gathering stitch all the way along here and again you're working into the ends of the rows so it doesn't really matter where the yarn goes so just create a gathering stitch all the way around there and I will see you at the end okay so I've run the gathering stitch through there so then you're just going to Pull that and gather up the toe and pull that snug. Okay, and you want to put and so pull that nice and tight. And then we're going to take this uh, beginning tail here and we can use that to make a knot. So this can be a little bit tricky because you want to keep this one really nice and tight and make a knot my needle on there still so I'm going to just pull that again nice and tight and then nice tight knot and then do another knot like that there we go and then you've got that toe closed up nicely and then you can just go ahead and darn in that one tail end and then we'll continue using the other one to stitch up the front of the boot uh, the front of the slipper and so when you're working with this one here um, you just you don't have that extra one to knot it with but you're going to just pull it snug uh, this in the same way and that'll be your inside of your toe with the, the colored one and or you know when your fabric's going the other way and then just do um, a loop over there make sure it's a nice tight thing put a knot in it and then continue to sew up the front of the boot. I'm not using this one because the color is so hard to see. But next we'll sew up the front of the boot here. All right, so the next step is that we're going to sew this part of the toe closed. So you wanna make sure this is nice and even. And then we're just gonna whip stitch and I'm going to pick up both uh, loops of the uh, the stitch on top here. So we've got, you know, that V stitch there and I'm going under both of those loops. When you're working on the other um, slipper, you have your end to work into here. I'll just do a couple more stitches. So yeah, so you're just gonna stitch through picking up both loops. Again, you're working on the wrong side of the fabric here. We're working on the inside. And you're just gonna stitch this a little less than halfway. Uh, up the top of the ridge and you want to try that on and see how it fits and you can see here in this slipper you're actually working into the ends of the rows so you don't have those two nice stitches to work into um, but just do your best to find where to work into and you may have once you get the slipper to fit I'll insert a picture here of how these ones are fitting and you can see how that looks and once you get the top toe closed as far as you like, you can just um, do a knot and darn in your tail end. But with when you're going into the ends here, you may end up with a hole like this. And you know what? Just use this yarn to stitch that hole closed and then uh, fasten that off. So go ahead, sew up the top part of the boot, and then I will see you when that's done. All right, so once you finish sewing up the front of uh, the foot section there, 
uh, tied a knot, fastened off, darn in your tail ends, you can turn the slipper right side out. And of course you're gonna do this for both slippers and make the pair and I have turned these ones right side out already. I think these are super cute and I love the way they're mismatched. It would be really hard with self-striping yarn to actually match these up. Um, but yeah, so at this point you can be you can be done. Let's make sure I have these all in the camera here. There we go. At this point you can be done. But if you want to put this cuff on the, the slipper, then we're going to carry on and, oops, let me get that out there. We'll carry on and do that step next. Now working on the right side of your slipper, having the right side out, I'm gonna join on some yarn to make the cuff and we're gonna be working into the back of the heel here. So put your yarn on your hook and just You've got your seam there. There's a seam there. So we'll join just before the seam, going under two loops. Yarn over, pull the yarn through, flip your tail over and do a slip knot. And then you're gonna do a chain one. I'm gonna put a stitch marker in that chain one just because I do find them hard <laughs> to find in this yarn. Uh, come on, there we go. So we're gonna just do a row of single crochet all the way around. Um, and so what you wanna do is you wanna catch this seam here. And this is a little bit of a hard stitch to work into, but do the best you can to get under a couple of loops of your, your stitched uh, heel seam. Pull the yarn through. Oh, I got snagged up there a wee bit. There we go. You'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over and do a single crochet and then into the next stitch, going under both loops, yarn over, pull the yarn through, and do a single crochet. And so you're just going to single crochet all the way around, going into those top two loops. Now, if you have your fabric going the other way, you're going to be working into the side, uh, you know, the ends of the rows. So just do the best you can to pick up, you know, a stitch here and a stitch there, a stitch there, a stitch there. Do your best to get that single crochet into the ends of those rows. And here, this is really easy to stitch into. So carry on and I will see you down at the corner, the, this V here. As you come down into this V here, you want to make sure to catch all the stitches. This this one might be a little bit tricky to see, but it's the stitch that you sewed your whip stitch into. So you wanna make sure to get that one and do your single crochet. You're then going to go into the whip stitch itself and you're going to do two single crochets into the whip stitch seam. And it, this is just for the first round that we're doing this. And then you carry on picking up your stitches the rest of the way around and I will see you at the end of this round. Okay, so as you come to the end of the round here, there's that uh, chain one. I'm gonna join into the chain one. You can take that stitch marker out and do a slip stitch. And that's the end of the first round. Now at this point, you have a decision to make. Um, you're going to chain one. If you carry on going in the same direction, I'll insert a picture here. This is what the stitch pattern will look like. So because you're working in rounds, a single crochet looks different than it does if you're working back and forth. So you can either continue in rounds or um, you can turn your work. And that's what I'm, I suggest so that you can carry on um, with the same stitch pattern so it looks the same. So turn your work, you've got your chain one. I'm gonna put a stitch marker in there. And now what I found is I needed to actually skip this next stitch. Otherwise the back of the, this uh, cuff became too flared. So uh, chain one, skip a stitch and go into the next stitch and do your single crochet and you're just going to single crochet all the way around. And you're going into the top two loops of each stitch. If you're doing the other slipper, now you have these, these stitch loops to work into. 
and you aren't increasing uh, at this piece here, you're just crocheting all the way around. So go ahead and do that and I'll see you at the end. All right, as you come back around in this direction, there is a little stitch there you wanna make sure to get. It's a bit of a tight stitch. And whoopsie. And again, you're going to join back into that chain one. Picking up two loops, do a slip stitch, chain one, and turn your work. And then you're going to, again, there's your chain one, skip a stitch, and then carry on working back in the other direction. So you can do as many rounds as you like. I'm going to do six all together. Uh, that's uh, a good number of rounds for this weight yarn and for my size foot, but you can do as many rounds as you like. So carry on, do as many rounds as you like, and we'll see you at the last round. Okay, so here I am at my last round and done my last stitch here, going into that chain stitch with a slip stitch and then a chain one to fasten off. And you're just going to cut your tail end, pull that through, snug that up, and then you want to darn in that tail end as well. So go ahead and do that, and we'll be back for the final reveal. And there you go, and you can wear it with the cuff up or flip the cuff over as I have done. And there you go, you have one pattern two styles of slippers, depending on your choice of yarn, depending on whether you do a cuff or not, depending on which way you turn the fabric. So you can use this pattern to do all kinds of um, slipper designs. And so super fun, really easy to make. This one, especially if you're not doing the cuff. And, um, but that yarn, that 87 yard Yar 87 yard ball of yarn <laughs> this is what was left so it's really close as far as being enough yarn to create like a lady's small slippers or children's slippers and no cuff anyways i think these are super fun they're very cozy and warm and so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial please give it a thumbs up and we'll see you next time